What up techies? In the late 1950s, the Soviet Union was the first to venture into space with their rocket ship the Sputnik 1. Just a few years later, in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first man to travel above the Earth. Since then, many more men and women have ventured into space, either for research purposes or tourism. However, as dangerous as it is to fly in a rocket ship, space travel is even more hazardous. A number of factors make space a very dangerous environment for humans. First of all, there is no air in space. This means that astronauts must wear special suits that supply them with oxygen. Without this oxygen, they would quickly suffocate. Secondly, it is incredibly cold in space. Temperatures can range from minus 455 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a range of over 850 degrees. Finally, there is the issue of radiation. Space is filled with harmful cosmic rays that can cause radiation sickness. For these reasons, space travel is a very risky endeavor. Let's explore some of these dangerous moments. On April 19, 1971, the Soviet Union sent their first space station up in low Earth orbit. Six days later, they launched Soyuz 11 with three astronauts aboard. Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsyev. This mission would be known as one of exemplary bravery because it marked the first time humans had been lost in space. In jest, Vladislav Volkov asked flight control to have the customary bottle of cognac prepared for them when they landed. Unfortunately, the astronauts never made it back to Earth. The Soyuz 11's orbital bell-shaped capsule and instrument modules were successfully separated 29 minutes before landing at 160 kilometers. However, ground control lost radio contact when the capsule began its descent. All three astronauts were found dead inside when the capsule was finally recovered. The cause of their deaths was determined to be suffocation due to a loss of cabin pressure. Ironically, their deaths could have been prevented if they had only opened their suit visors. But in the vacuum of space, even the simple act of reaching for a lever proved impossible. The Soyuz 11 tragedy was a reminder of the dangers of space exploration, but it also showed that humans are capable of great courage and sacrifice, even in the face of certain death. But then a shocking development occurred. The crew capsule's internal pressure rapidly dropped when the other modules were released, and all the air inside began rapidly leaving into the vacuum of space. Meanwhile, nobody in mission control knew anything was wrong. A tense dread spread over the room as attempts to contact the cosmonauts through VHF radio were met with an unsettling quiet. The capsule was detected on radar entering Soviet territory 22 minutes before touchdown. In the aftermath of the space disaster, the investigation team identified the malfunctioning valve as the root cause of the accident. Their passing saddened the entire nation, and their funeral was a huge and dramatic spectacle. To redesign the Soyuz spacecraft, the Soviet Union put a halt to all human spaceflights. However, this hiatus didn't last long. They were back in business after a few years. These days, spacesuits are mandatory for all cosmonauts to wear on takeoffs and landings. Just another example of how safety has improved since those early days of space exploration. While the loss of life in space is a tragedy, it has not been unique to Russia. American astronauts have also died in accidents. Nevertheless, despite these setbacks, the Russian space program has continued to thrive in recent years. On April 12, 1981, one of the first American space shuttles took off, and for the next 25 years, the American public would become accustomed to seeing these spacecraft taking off into the great unknown. However, even the most cutting-edge technology can run into issues, and by January 1986, Americans were starting to feel bored with spaceflight. Luckily, the space shuttle program has always relied on its innovative technology to solve problems and keep things running smoothly. But things might have been different if they had been relying on dated technology. January 28, 1986 started off as a pretty great day. The weather was sunny and cold, which is the perfect combination. Plus, the SDS-51 leader's crew was getting ready to board the Challenger orbiter. This launch was special because it included civilians, school teachers, and Krista McAuliffe, a mother of two as payload specialists. People were really excited about this launch because it demonstrated that space was no longer off limits to anyone in the United States. Unfortunately, the launch didn't go as planned, and the Challenger exploded shortly after liftoff. All seven astronauts on board were killed, including Krista McAuliffe. This tragedy shocked the nation and led to a reevaluation of the space program. At 11.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, on April 12, 1983, the Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida, carrying Krista McAuliffe, the first regular American to travel to space. Numerous people, including Krista's family and a group of students, witnessed the launch from the ground, and millions more watched it on television. In just 73 seconds, 
the space shuttle disintegrated into a cloud of smoke and flames. So, what ended up happening? Two hours prior to takeoff, the tower was covered in ice. Overnight, the ice crew monitored temperatures and determined that the left SRB was at minus 4 degrees Celsius and the right SRB was at minus 13 degrees Celsius. As tracking solid rocket booster temperatures was purely for technical purposes and not part of the launch commit criteria, the shuttle's solid rocket boosters are constructed in four sections, each connected by three O-ring joints. These O-rings maintain the internal pressure of the SRB. If they were to fail, the SRB would burn through or fail catastrophically. The right solid rocket booster experienced this exact thing. Black smoke billowed from the right SRB during liftoff, indicating that the O-ring had already failed. Unfortunately, the shuttle was already in the air when the failing O-ring began spewing flames in all directions, and the resulting sideways flame cut through the SRB like a knife. The $1.2 billion spaceship, satellite cargo, and seven astronauts were all destroyed instantly. The extreme cold played a major role in the incident. During the actual launch, which occurred in minus 3 degrees Celsius weather, engineers were aware of the dangers to the O-rings. Expert engineers warned against sending the shuttle into space, but NASA ultimately decided to go ahead with the launch. Because of the severity of this accident, NASA grounded the space shuttle program for two years while engineers redesigned various parts of the craft. The loss of life in the space shuttle disaster was tragic, but it was not an isolated incident. It was in April of 1981 that the Columbia, the first American space shuttle, was launched into space. 27 more shuttle launches occurred after the initial one. The seven-person crew of SDS-107, which launched in January, included Commander Rick D. Husband, Pilot William C. McCool, Payload Commander Michael P. Anderson, Israeli astronaut Ilan Ramona's payload specialist, Flight Engineer Kalpana Chala, a veteran of mission SDS-87, and U.S. Navy captains flying as mission specialists David M. Thompson and William P. Sturkow. The launch appeared to have gone off without a hitch. Each astronaut worked two 12-hour shifts throughout the flight, resulting in 80 separate scientific experiments. On February 1, 2003, the Space Shuttle Columbia was scheduled to re-enter the atmosphere and land, marking the end of their mission and their safe return to Earth. At 2.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Mission Control Entry Flight Control Team began their shift. They cleaned up the orbiter in preparation for re-entry. The Columbia's deorbit burn was approved at 1.10 p.m and lasted for eight minutes. Columbia descended back to Earth at 1.44 p.m., having traveled a total of 120 kilometers in altitude. Abnormally high tension on the left wing was first detected by a sensor about 4.5 minutes later. The sensor data was stored internally, making it inaccessible to the crew and ground controllers. With the increase in drag, the orbiter yawed to the left. No one on board the orbiter noticed the drag because the flight control system instantly corrected the problem. Shortly after, Sensors reported problems with the left wing's hydraulics, and the left tires on the landing gear began losing pressure. They lasted contact with Columbia while flying at an altitude of 60 kilometers and a speed of 20,120 kilometers per hour. Eyewitnesses were taken aback when investigators shot a piece of insulation foam at the shuttle wing and blew a 60 centimeter hole in it. This proved beyond a reasonable doubt that the debris strike was responsible for the destruction of Columbia and the deaths of its crew. After this mission, the space shuttle program was officially scrapped. Since then, the Russian Soyuz program and, later, SpaceX rockets have been used to send humans into space. Thank you for joining us today as we explore the dangers of space. It's a vast and dangerous place, but through the bravery of our astronauts, we continue to learn more about it every day. I hope you'll stick around for future videos, where we'll explore even more great updates from space. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you again.